We are in week three of our series, Refuge. And today I have a confession to make, all right? I absolutely hate peas. Anybody else? I mean, they are repulsive. Those things are nasty. They're like this, you know, like super tiny, but disgusting. Um, so sorry if you like peas, but I do not. Um, so I got to tell you, there was a time I was eating lunch with my grandma. We used to go to this place and it was like, if I ate all my food, I'd get a bouncy ball for 10 cents, which I mean, why not? Um, and so she's like, Hannah, you got to eat your peas if you're going to get your bouncy ball. And, um, I like froze and I was like, but grandma, I didn't say this out loud, but it's going through my head, right? Like, but I hate peas. So I straight up did not eat these peas. I don't, she probably still gave me my bouncy ball because it's my grandma, but, uh, I was like, nope, not, I can't. There is a line grandma and I cannot cross it. And today just can't happen. Um, so I knew she knew it was the best for me and I needed to eat my vegetables or whatever, but I just, I just couldn't do it. Um, Have you ever had anyone suggest that you do something that you didn't want to do, but you know it's the best for you? See, sometimes that's what the Lord does for us. Even if we don't understand it, He has us do things for our good, but most importantly, for His glory. So what we're going to talk about today, our main takeaway today, this will be on the screen. God helps His people obey Him so that He might be glorified. God helps his people obey him so that he might be glorified, all right? So let me dive into that a little bit, just a little bit more. So it says, God's will for all believers is for us to know him forever, right? He's infinite. He knows everything, and he has the power to accomplish everything that he wills. That's crazy. God calls us to use our lives to reveal him to the rest of the world, but he doesn't leave us to our own devices. Thank you, Jesus. Instead, God says, sent Jesus to save us, to restore our relationship with him. And he sent his Holy Spirit to remind us that we are his and to empower us to live out the identity that we have in him for his glory. So we're going to take this back to the Old Testament. Um, We're going to go back to Ezra. Ezra is in the Old Testament of of the Bible. And we're going to go to Ezra chapter 1. 4 verse 24 and then we'll go through 5 2 but if you have your bibles with you anybody have their binder with them today anybody bring their binder gets your memory verses done very good um but go ahead and grab your bible again ezra 4 24 we're going to read this together it says then the work on the house of god that is in jerusalem stopped it ceased until the second year of the reign of darius king of persia Now the prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, son of Ido, prophesied that to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel who was over them. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shiatel, and Jeshua, the son of Jezodiak, I know, lots of words, right? Arose and began to rebuild the house of God that is in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them, supporting them. So I'm going to explain this, but I want you to take away a point from this. And it's, it is God's proclamation helps his people obey. So again, the Israelites, he had um, brought them home from this exile they had been in to rebuild his temple, which a temple was such a big deal because it was a place where they went to go meet God. It was very symbolic. It's different from like our churches today, wherever you're sitting in, whatever building you're in, it looked a lot different than what it is now. Um, However, the people, these people, when they came back from their exile, they were distracted. They wanted to get their own houses more beautiful and put together. And they were discouraged by some angry local officials who didn't want this temple rebuilt. Um, And a proclamation is a way of saying something so that everyone can hear it, so that everyone knows what's going on, everyone can hear it. So God sent two prophets, people who proclaim things, to boldly proclaim his command to build the temple and his power to bring it to pass. Now, again, people were distracted. They wanted to do their own thing, but the Lord told them specifically that his temple was to be built 
first. It was supposed to be built before they did anything on their own time. So sometimes God wants us to do things that we don't want to do. Maybe we want to do our own things first, have our own agenda first, but the Lord says that he wants us to follow his plan. And maybe that Maybe it makes us feel afraid or it makes us feel like, why can't we have our own way? Well, let me tell you, Zerubbabel in that story and the people went back to building. They still had their home, their own homes, their needs and their enemies, and their potential for distraction and discouragement was there, but the, the people had to make a decision. They simply had to make the first thing first to finish the temple. And God would take care of the rest. He would take. He'd already. He'd already gotten them freed. He'd already uh, got their their home back. He'd already given them the opportunity to start on this temple. But if they would just take that first step, He would take care of the rest. So when we give God our best, He takes care of the rest. We just have to start. So let's go to the second point here. We're going to go to Ezra chapter 6 now, verses 14 through 15. Okay, stick with me. Get to it, flip to it. You got this. And the elders of the Jews built and prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah son of Ido. They finished their building by the decree of God of Israel and by the decree of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. And the house was finished on the third day of the month of Adar and the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. So, The point for this is God's provision helps his people succeed. So the cool part about this, you guys, is some of those local officials, you remember, they didn't want the temple rebuilt. They, but that they would loosen their grip on God's people. It would protect his people and it, he provided everything they needed to finish the temple. When they demanded that the temple construction stop, God's people sent a letter to this King Darius. And the cool part about this is, is King Darius told them that that temple needed to be built. He even used other cultures, other kings, a king that even wasn't theirs, to have a, a, a thing that God wanted come to pass. So what kinds of situations in our culture should we avoid in order to follow God's will? That's a big question, and that can be confusing sometimes. So God used one king to bring his people back and another to raise up his temple. King Darius told the angry local officials to back off and let the temple be built. He also supported the work with local tax dollars, which is crazy, their own money. He was like, yep, go ahead and use it. God provided this favor. They didn't, that, that wasn't what was typical in that day, day and age. God provided this favor with the king and provided provision for it to be finished. So from the beginning to the end, from cornerstone to capstone, from cornerstone of the project to the whole thing being done, God provided for his people to complete his plan. And you have to remember that you as a person, you're under construction as well. You're just as much a working progress as this was for the Israelites. But we are meant to be transformed into Christ's image. And sometimes it might feel impossible to be more like Jesus, but using our own abilities and our own strength, it is impossible. But with God's power and how he provides, his plan for us will come to pass and we just have to trust him. So last point here, we're gonna go to Ezra 6, verses 16 through 17 and then 22. And it says, And the people of Israel, the priests and the Levites and the rest of the returned exiles, celebrated and dedicated this house of God with joy. They offered at the dedication of this house of God 100 bulls, 200 rams, 400 lambs, and as a sin offering for Israel, 12 male goats, according to the number of tribes for Israel. They kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy, for the Lord had made them joyful and turned the heart and the king of Assyria to them so that he aided them in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. So the point for this piece is God's power helps his people rejoice. What God started with these people, he completed 
through his people. The exiles were home. The temple was finished. Everything that was needed to to, uh, return to their normal worship, priests, Levites, altars, sacrifices, it was all ready. And God's people had completed God's plan only, though, by God's power. And it was time to celebrate and rejoice. All of these kings and people who shouldn't have helped them complete this plan, they shouldn't have done it but God. But God allowed provision for it to happen. So sometimes, though, there's challenging moments that we find, and sometimes it's hard to find joy when God asks us to obey. I found that in my own life. There have been times where when God asks me to obey something, I get confused as to why he's asking me to do that. And there's specifically a time in my life where he asked me to do something so difficult. And I came to realize that it was for my good, but it was sometimes really hard to find joy in that. But I had a moment where I had to realize, where does my joy actually come from? My joy actually comes from being secure in who Jesus is and that I never have to find, you know, if nothing else went right in my life ever, I could find joy in Jesus because he is my eternal hope and I have a future in Jesus. So, but sometimes maybe we have to answer the question, why is joy so hard to find and where can we find it? Ezra 6.22, we just read, the Lord made them joyful. It doesn't say they made themselves joyful. It doesn't say they found joy in something or someone else. Jesus generates joy in our life. The most joyful people often don't have the most, but maybe they serve Jesus the most. And we'll never find true joy except from the giver of joy, Jesus. So God promised that the glory of the second temple would be greater than the first. The glory of Jesus coming back would even be greater than that first temple that was created. This was fulfilled when Jesus, when he was God in the flesh, came and ministered as as he he was considered a, a physical temple of God. And all temple sacrifices pointed to Jesus. The temple brought people closer to God, but Jesus brings people forever into the family of God. When Jesus chose us, he broke so many things. The veil was torn. It's another story for another day. But Jesus allowed us to be part of the family of God. The harsh reality is, Crave, that God's will isn't primarily about you. God's will is about glorifying him and introducing others to him through our lives and our words. But This means that sometimes you might feel like you're missing out, but I promise it doesn't mean that God doesn't care about you or want what's best for you. What's best for you might not always be the same thing that your friends are doing, but it will always be what God is doing in your life. Obedience might seem like a boring word or a difficult concept. I can relate, but obedience to God leads to joy in Christ, which is always worth it. Crave, I know it's not easy, but you have a choice and you can choose Jesus every time. I face times where, yes, it's confusing, but when I look at the big picture of my life, Whenever I've said yes to what God wants, I've always said yes to the best thing for me because I know I serve a God who loves me and who cares about me. So wherever you are, don't feel shame in this. Move forward. And even though you may have had a list of things that you never obeyed God in, but tomorrow his mercies are new every single morning. And when you wake up or even yet tonight, if there's decisions that you have to make to obey God, do it because it is always, always worth it. We love you, Crave. Have a great time in tribes and obey God with everything that you've got.